Never destroyed a dosa like this before. It really got stuck. The first dosa is a disaster. Cut it, cut it, cut! Radhe is a very adventurous cook. So I'm trying to make it a little less adventurous for the victims. Not my dosa day, but it'll still taste good. Go and drown dosa from the hotel. Eat and do ha, hoo, ha, ha. Hey, yeah, shoot her, huh? Not bad, a quick learner, huh? <laughs> this dough has been specially prepared by me. Who's going to eat this? Inevitably, one who is already enslaved, I'll have to give it to her only, because nobody's saying yes. <laughs> well, I pack it in this and give you, huh? <laughs> Be a slave for your life. Ragi is the most female-friendly cereal you can consume, so millet is a solution for our health, for soil health and for ensuring there are no famines in the world, that nobody should die of hunger. Let's make it happen. Namaskaram, this is uh, the year of the millet. Well, we've been using millets right from our childhood, but now it's important that we bring it to the entire population, the whole world in some way, because this is very important in terms of large-scale human health, which has become a serious problem, and the nutritional deficiencies uh, due to single cereal consumption, and a massive <laughs> diabetic pandemic happening all over the world, particularly in India. The most important aspect is millet cultivation is a far better thing to do for the soil regeneration than rice and wheat, which has become the most staple grain to be consumed all over the world. Millet will make a lot of difference, it is not a very thirsty crop, unlike paddy and wheat, and both of them are uh, essentially delta crops, they should have remained that way. Paddish was only grown in delta areas where there was naturally a certain amount of standing water and people made use of it on marshlands and stuff like that. But today, we are irrigating the lands heavily to do this. This not only consumes water, this also destroys the soil in many different ways. Millet consumption, both for human health and soil health, will make a, a fantastic difference. My daughter Radhe, living in Chennai, only on rice. Whatever you eat, idli rice, dosa rice, pongal rice, 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 this Chennai. So I'm trying to cultivate her to <laughs> consume some millet. And of course, uh, she's a, a very adventurous cook. I mean to say, for those who eat, it's a bit adventurous. So I'm trying to make it a little less adventurous for the victims. And uh, this is a ragi dosa. Ragi, a very important cereal of uh, subcontinent. And uh, particularly, you know, when we were growing up in Karnataka, it was very much a part of daily consumption everywhere, but somehow it got bad press that it is uh, a poor man's food and it doesn't give you social prestige, but it gives you health, well-being and nourishment. I must tell all of you, the ladies of the world, I must tell you, ragi is the most female-friendly cereal you can consume. This millet is fantastic for women, it has the highest amount of calcium in among all the uh, grains and also very high levels of iron, which is an issue. One is uh, across the world, there is uh, such a, a level of anemia all over the world, particularly for the female population. There is also a problem of uh, porosity of bones being high at certain stages in a woman's life, and uh, ragi can make a tremendous difference for both. So, most of the cooking I still believe 
unless you're eating only from uh, food apps. Uh, I still believe home cooking largely is still by women and uh, they must pick up these cereals and make sure everybody eats this, not that it's not good for men, it's good for everybody. But I'm saying there are special advantages for a woman because certain lack of nourishment in certain areas of nourishment has been an issue because of single cereal consumption and not everybody is able to maintain other aspects of uh, nutritional aspects very well for all of them. Ragi can make a tremendous difference. Today uh, in India, the government of India has coined this word which is a wonderful thing picked up from the tradition but bringing back into usage, it's called Sri Annam. And uh, here at the Isha Yoga Center, at least five days in a week, everybody is consuming millets and we are also encouraging the local farmers and the farmer producer organizations to produce millets and uh, the consumption is slowly going up everywhere around us also, but this needs to happen across the country for a healthy population and across the world for a healthy humanity. I hope this dosa, normally, the first dosa is a disaster. Cut it, cut it, cut! Millet takes time to cook, it cooks little more, at least in this form a little more than the rice, but it does a lot more. It's a very slow release cereal, that is, uh, you, there'll be no sugar spikes because of you you're eating a millet. It releases uh, its glucose part of it very, very slowly, so particularly those who suffer from diabetes or whose life is threatened by diabetes, ragi and other millets also, does a fantastic job. Not bad, a quick learner, huh? <laughs> when we used to travel a lot in Karnataka, we used to eat a lot of ragi mudde on the road, but you don't find that so much anymore. And also, uh, it used to be very soft and easy to eat, but now when you get ragi mudde in most places, it's like you can't eat it. So, <laughs> is it a question of cultivation or is it just a question of cooking? No, cooking, people have lost practice. Now they made some cookers, uh, like a rice cooker, they got a ragi mudde cooker that you can cook in that. That's what they're saying, I've not seen one. But uh, making of ragi, ragi mudde needs some effort and really kind of kneading it. Uh, when it's cooking, you must knead it properly, otherwise it won't go very well. But today, uh, you see, I will make a, a ragi roti which is very tasty and easy to do compared to the mudde. But ragi mudde is unique in the way it is eaten. Only in Karnataka people generally know how to eat. In Tamil Nadu people mix it like rice and eat it. But in Karnataka we make it into small balls and dip it in the curry and just swallow it like that with a little bit of chewing. So it's a unique way of eating. That kind of eating is very good for those who work in the farms because ragi, as I said earlier, is a slow-release uh, millet. So if you eat it in that way, that you just dip it in either green uh, greens or some other curry that you have made, uh, the thing is because you have not been chewing it, the release becomes even slower. So if you eat one ragi mudde like brunch, a big ragi mudde for brunch all day, you're plowing, working on the field, eight hours of work, it will sustain without you feeling hungry and weak because the release is so slow. So this is something that they've arrived at knowing that if you chew it, you'll digest faster. So they make it in such a way that it's made into small balls and swallowed like that. So, 
people who have to work in the open and there is no access to food whenever you feel like it, these are all the things that they discovered by their, their own observation. Well, this is a ragi roti. You need a little bit of banana leaf or also you could be... do it on what they call as the butter paper. But the important thing is, you take ragi flour, just steam it a little bit like how you would do... even on an idli stand you could do it, just steam it a little bit. And then you can add things for taste. In this one there is coriander, if you want you can add onion, uh, grated coconut, uh, minutely cut chilies according to your taste and of course a little bit of salt and boom, you have a great breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever you like. A mm -hmm. uh, word of caution for all of you who are viewing this, uh, this dough has been specially prepared by me with some incredible taste added to it. So, a word of caution and warning is, if you eat this ragi roti, you may become enslaved to me for life. So, I'm just warning you beforehand. Unless you're ready for that, don't eat my ragi roti <laughs> Who's going to eat this? Who wants to become a slave? Nobody's saying yes, so... <laughs> Inevitably, one who is already enslaved, I'll have to give it to her only, because nobody's saying yes <laughs> This goes with... with chutney. Be a slave for your life <laughs> So these are the different types of uh, uh, millets which are grown in the local region. Ragi, Same, Sajje, Varagu, Kambu, these are all the Tamil names that I'm saying. In every region they have their own name. So here's a package with six different kinds of millets. And if you still don't know how to cook and make all these things, it can be just cooked like rice and eaten or it could... you could make a chapati out of it. But there is another packet of what is called a Sanjivini, which has fourteen different ingredients of all these millets, uh, various uh, pulses and grams and also some nuts and stuff like that. Fourteen different ingredients which makes it a complete diet by itself. That can be just made into... just boil it in water and you can drink it or you can make it into roti and eat it, or you can eat it in many different forms. So, for those of you who want some re something ready-made, that is also there. The idea of providing the seas, we have to bring back millet into the world in a big way for large-scale consumption if we really want to turn the soil around and also turn human health around in many ways. Because as nations grow and become affluent, they are spending incredible amounts of money on health care. That's not how it should be. Because once the nation becomes affluent, it has both choices of nourishment and lifestyle. When you have choice of nourishment and lifestyle, you generally have no business to fall ill. You should be taking care of it. But unfortunately, more affluent the nations get, the more sick they're getting. So this is one reason why we are seeing how to push millets into everybody's diet and fundamental interest is that soil should be healthy. The revival of soil, the regeneration of soil in the world could go a long way if at least fifty to sixty percent of the cereals that we consume become millets and very easily in every kind of weather conditions and uh, uh, atmospheres, we can make sure that there shall be no such thing as famine in the world if we really cultivate millet on a large scale and make sure every region of the world has it and little bit of change in our dietary habits if we do this, we can ensure the painful famines that we see happening repeatedly across the world need not happen. Right now food is grown in one place but they're eating it five thousand miles away 
that's not how it should be. The basic food must be grown where people are. And millet is the answer for that, because in any kind of conditions, soil conditions and atmospheric conditions or climatic conditions, you can grow millets with very little uh, water availability also, you can grow millets. So millet is a solution for our health, for soil health and for ensuring there are no famines in the world, that nobody should die of hunger. Let's make it happen.